Hi, I'm Steffen from Programming X and in today's video I want to talk about when to use getters and setters and when to use uh, access attributes directly. What you should already know for this video is how attributes or fields in a class work, how object methods work and how constructors work. These are the concepts we will be using in this video. So some classes have no methods that contain any logic. These are referred to, for example, data structures or complex data types or records or if we are in Java, plain old Java objects. These names are roughly all the same or mean all the same. Um, we can use them more or less interchangeably. We want to take a look at a simple example. Um, if we just want to represent a dot on a screen, what could a good dot class look like for such a task? Here we got the dot class. It has two attributes here, one for the X position and one for the Y position of the dot on the screen. Uh, we neglect the color here in this example. And furthermore, we have a constructor which simply takes the values that we provide upon construction of the object. Then we have a main class which is located in another package which is usually the case if you use classes of other developers. And um, in our main method we simply create a dot object and we access its variables and use it in our system out print line to print these on the screen. We've written our dot class by directly accessing the attributes of our class. But what if our requirements change? Suppose we want to go on and we want to be able to move our dot from one position to another one, but at the same time prevent it from being moved off the screen. Right now we could access our X position directly and for example, take the value minus 5 and assign it to our X position. This has the problem that now we would move the dot off the screen. In order to prevent this, we have to restrict the access to our dot attributes. So let's remove the public modifier. And um, if you're curious why we don't use the private modifier, watch this video till the end. Let's take a look at our main program. Our main class is in a different package that means that this code here, our system out print line and the assignment are erroneous. Our compiler will show us an error because we cannot access our X position here and our Y position here since we defined them here with package visibility. Hence, we create getters and setters and try to make the access via these. So, our getters and setters look like this. Basically, they check whether our position would be moved off screen. If that's the case, they don't do anything. Otherwise, they take the new position. Our getters simply return the value of our attribute. Now let's take a look at our main method. In our main method, we create a dot and then we can access our attributes with getters and setters. Our getters have a public modifier, therefore the access is possible. The same is true for the setter. The assignment can be done with the setter instead of the assignment with our equation symbol. This is also valid because our setter has a public modifier. So basically we use a setter instead of an assignment and we use a getter instead of an operation where we read the value of an attribute. Here we read the value of an attribute and assign it to a uh, variable a and here we do the same thing with the getter method. Another example where we use getters um, is also for read access in expressions. For example in, this, in the system or print line um, the d.x has to be evaluated before the system or print line can take place and whenever such an evaluation takes place we basically re also read the value of the attribute here and we can do this with the getter method instead. 
In the last step, we should add the same validity checks to the constructor as we have in the setter methods. If we create a new dot, it can't be placed off screen. One problem that still persists is that the both setter methods work independently of each other. That means if we call the setter here, we can set the x position to 7, but if we set y to a negative position, y would remain unchanged. It would be better if the whole transformation is cancelled, if one of the coordinates is not valid. So it is better to do this in a single method, so we introduce a move method and remove the setter methods in the next step. So what have we done here? We added the move method here. It is basically the same as our constructor, does the same thing, makes the same checks. And we removed the set methods because uh, we don't need them anymore. We do not want to be able to set the coordinates independently. Now we have to call the move method instead of the setter methods. And if we do so, we see that we have to provide valid arguments here. If we do not provide valid arguments, um, then the point wouldn't be moved at all. Here's an example with an invalid argument, and if we print out the result of this, then we will see that the, second, uh, the, the move operation did not succeed, and we still have the same coordinates as in the printout above here. So let's recap. When do we need setters? Well, we need setters, first of all, if we need validity checks when overriding attribute values. That's the normal use of set methods. But we also need setters if we need to restrict the read access to attributes, but not the write access. In that case, we would have setters, but no getters. Then let's take a look, when do we need getter methods? Well, we need getters if we need to restrict the write access but not the read access to attributes. Then we would have a getter method, but no setter method for an attribute. If we do not have one of those cases, it's usually better to not use getter and setter methods. If we don't need them, they just load our code. We have more code. It is more complicated to read. We should have a reason to use them. Otherwise, we should not use them. In the middle of the video, I promised that if you stayed until the end and watched until the end, I would tell you why we didn't use private modify, a private modifier for our attributes. The basic answer is it's for testing purposes. Because, let's take a look at an example. What we see here is a unit test. And in this unit test, we create a dot. And uh, then we can look with an assert equals method whether our dot has the correct coordinates. Well, we created our dot with the coordinates 5 and 7, so we also assume that our x coordinate is 5 and our y coordinate is 7. Then we execute our move method, and since we provided a non valid argument, the minus 9, we have to assume that after the move, after executing the move method, our assertion still holds true that still our coordinates are 5 and 7. If any of the assertions fail, our test will also fail. That's the basics of the unit test. So and why um, didn't we use private modifiers? Because we took our test and packed it into the same package as our class. This means we can access the variables from our dot class. If we had used a private modifier, this access would not have been possible. Therefore, it's reasonable to use the package modifier if we do not want to explicitly hide any of our attributes or we have security reasons or whatever. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, please hit the like button or hit the subscribe button. It really helps that this video get out to more people. Thank you.